I wanted to do a build report on my new plans for 150 gram robot. At the last event I went to, the Battles of Maker Fair Orlando, I brought a couple spinners and still had the lifter as my UK ant. And I had a lot more fun with the spinners. As much as I like lifting, especially using the stupid titanium spork that I was using, it's more fun just to destroy stuff. So to that end, I'm gonna build a vertical spinner to match the other two insect weight robots I have. So as far as parts go, I'm gonna be using two of the 50 to one gearhead motors that Robot Marketplace sells. I think they're actually Pululo or whatever that company is. I had originally ordered the 30 to ones, but they ended up being out of stock and I don't really have a whole lot of time and Robot Marketplace was awesome and let me switch my order to these motors that were in stock. I'm also using the motor mounts that they sell for these. For wheels, I'm using two 1.5 inch Dubro wheels. I'm worried they might be a little big, but I think as long as I avoid getting into pushing matches, I think they should be okay. And then for speed controllers, I'm using two of the Fingertech Tiny ESCs because they work. Got my Hobby King three channel receiver. My battery is this Nanotech 260 milliamp hour two cell LiPoly pack. And I'm gonna put in a Fingertech switch just to make it easier to turn this on and off. For the weapon motor, I'm going with something that I know. So I'm using the DYS BE1806 brushless motor. This is something that I got from Russ Barrow's brushless drive tutorial. And I used them in my beetle weight and they seem to work well as drive components and I figured might as well just use them for the weapon since I am familiar with them and they can act as spares for two robots. And then to that same end, I'm using the ZTW Spider brushless controller. I'm gonna flash it with Simon K. Same thing I use for the drive system in the Beetle. And for the weapon, I'm just gonna use a big chunk of aluminum. Not this whole big chunk of aluminum, but a chunk of aluminum. And right now, all the guts not weighing in that weapon blade because I haven't cut it down yet, but everything's coming out to about 90, 91 grams. So I think I'm in good shape so far. So I was racking my brain trying to figure out how to make this design work. I keep this notebook with me so I could jot down ideas. And I was writing out the sizes of the different major components. And it hit me. I could turn the receiver and the battery on their side and save a ton of room with this design. My last couple 150 gram bots, the wheels were really far out. The main weight of it ended up being in the center and it really affected my ability to drive it and caused a lot of frame flex. So now I can keep everything a lot more compact. This is a rough sketch of the design. I'm gonna go take it to SolidWorks and do a better version of it. This doesn't account for material thickness or anything yet, plus bend radius. But basically my plan is to use a sheet of Home Depot Lexan. It should be thin and light enough and make the main body of this thing. So basically the base plate here, and then the different panels that will be the sides, I'll bend up out of the Lexan using a heat gun. Then I'll install two center rails that will hold the weapon in place and I'll make some kind of mechanism where I can attach a top plate to it. I'm not quite sure what that's gonna be at this point. All right, well, I threw most of it into SolidWorks here and I think it came out okay. We're looking at about right on the target weight, though it's missing a couple little pieces, but I think I can shave some weight off in some other locations. I didn't wanna make the frame too much smaller than this just because I gotta get my fingers in there. So it's probably a little bigger than it really needs to be, but I'm gonna mess with it. I still have to figure out what the heck I'm gonna put for top armor on it. And there's not much weight for that either. So I'm gonna go print out a template and start cutting the pieces for this. Well, my printer didn't do the best job and I kind of messed up the orientation while trying to print it, but we have a template here. So now it's time to cut this out get it onto the Lexan and cut that out and start bending it. So now I got both patterns here for the Lexan taped down. I'm gonna take them outside and cut them. I did just have the outline for the weapon support rail. I'm going to use the actual pattern on the aluminum one since for some reason my printer only fit one of them when it printed it out. But the plastic one's less important, just kind of the opposite side giving a little extra support. The frame and the aluminum side to the weapon rail is the most important pieces that I'm cutting today. Well, I guess the weapon's probably the most important piece, but we'll get there. It's not perfect, but it's serviceable. All right, so I cut out the two weapon rails. So this one is the Lexan one, and then we have our aluminum one. Pull that 
thing off because now we're done with our template. I mean, nothing I do is ever that precise, but uh, we're getting somewhere. We definitely got a weapon rail. So I'm going to use the Lexan piece as a template to get the bolt pattern from the motor because I haven't been able to really reliably measure that. So I'm going to do that, and then we're going to copy that over to the aluminum, and then we'll drill out this hole. I just kind of put a tiny pilot hole just to get a rough idea, and then we'll take it from there. Since I'm busy watching a live stream of, uh, I think it's the war event online, uh, it's always good to watch robot fights while you're building robots, but I don't want to go outside and finish the last little bits I need to do for this next step, so this is the frame thus far. I mean, the bends aren't perfect by a lot, but I have uh, everything kind of installed here. I've got the main weapon rails, weapon motor will bolt right in here. I've already tested that out. So it's coming together. Um, it looks like I'm going to need to shave off some weight. I think my imprecision kind of screwed me over, but... It's going to get there and uh, just take a little more work and I'll get it how I need it today. And then next up, I'm going to be cutting and drilling the uh, weapon blade here. So this is the part that I'm like most nervous about. Hopefully everything goes well and I don't screw it up. So for one day's work, I got pretty far on it. I and mean, we got the weapon mounted. We got the drive in there. We got speed controllers hooked up. Just got to run power through it and then mount the individual components inside. It is a little overweight. I think we're looking at about 15 grams overweight, which isn't a small amount. But I've started marking up a lot of areas where I can pull weight out. Some are really simple, just like this little square of Lexan here can come out. I'm going to make the wedge a little shallower, because if you look at where the blade's coming right now, I mean, it's a lot of feed room to bring a robot up there. So I'm going to cut that down along this black line, make it a much shallower wedge, and get the robots fed in much faster. I'm going to cut some out of this section back here on both sides as well. It's not really doing much to help things. And I'm sure I'm going to have to find some other weight somewhere because I don't think that's quite enough but I'll pull weight somewhere out of this I mean the armor is much thicker than it needs to be this is 16th inch aluminum because I needed the strength I was really worried the motor was gonna just flop around if it wasn't something really sturdy here so I'll have to keep looking at options and see what I can do with it but it's turning out. It's hopefully going to be running by the end of tomorrow if I get another good day at work in. So this is the nature of the problem right here. This Lexan frame currently weighs 35 grams, almost 35 pounds, which it's pretty close to a third of the weight of this robot. So that's no good. I made this one out of some thin aluminum that I've used on previous 150 gram bots, and it's 20 grams. Literally, that is pretty much on the nose how much weight I need to save on this robot. So as much as it sucks that I spent all that time on the Lexan frame, I'm just going to abandon it and use this frame made out of scraps in about 10 minutes, and I think it's going to solve a lot of my problems. So I'm probably going to take the Lexan frame, cut it up, use it as templates because I have all the drill holes in it and everything. So I'll just use that to mark out where everything needs to go on this new frame and get back to work and basically rebuild the robot. So that's all the components in the new chassis, and we are four grams underweight, which is perfect. I don't have top armor, but hopefully I can scrounge them together that four grams or less there is actually some more weight i could take out of this thing i did chop down that front wedge like i was talking about but there's definitely some other areas where i can kind of clean up some imperfections well there's a lot of imperfections but there's definitely some areas i could trim down and make a little smaller and lighter and hopefully that'll give me a little extra weight and i can find something lightweight to stick on top of this so now it's more or less together i kind of skipped a few steps in filming just because i had to concentrate on what I was doing, but I shortened up most of the wires. I still have to shorten up the receiver plugs here. Obviously, I painted the frame and the weapon. Still have to make top armor for it, but more or less, that's an idea of the completed version. I did give it a quick little test drive. It seems like it has a little bit of trouble going forward and backwards. I don't know if it's like grinding on something when it tries to move, but we'll get that figured out. But now, because it works, I'm gonna take it outside and see how it really works. Thank <laughs> you. 
a couple last minute adjustments to Little Demon here. I added some Lexan top armor, just kind of sandwiched in here. I may add some connection point here in the back just so it doesn't come off. But I had um, some UHMW pieces in here as the supports for the main rail. And I replaced it with one of the Fingertech nut strips. And it actually saved weight, actually enough weight that I could afford the Lexan top armor. So that worked out really well. I glued in the opposite side. Really it's just there to add a barrier before the blade hits the battery by accident. But I think overall it's in decent shape. So it's pretty much ready for combat. And then I have my other two bots back here also pretty much ready for combat. So everything's underweight or at least close enough to it that I could account for some scale inaccuracy. But I've got Jack Chop, the one pounder there, and Sawin the beetle here with the stupid kit on it. I mean, it's a good kit. It works well. I just didn't really want to run a kit beetle again but my parts from big blue saw didn't show up so that's what i got going into small bots of mass destruction